Mr. President. Senator from Arkansas. I ask consent that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, when word spread that American forces found and killed Osama bin Laden, Americans gathered all across the country, places like Ground Zero, New York's Times Square, and in front of the White House to celebrate the news. For more than a decade, bin Laden had been on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list, and the announcement that our military conducted successful operation in Pakistan filled us with a national pride. After nearly 3,000 Americans died in the September 11th attacks, bin Laden, the plot's mastermind, was named public enemy number one. The years following that tragic day, he eluded capture. Justice finally caught up with him, and as a result of years of hard work and dedication from the brave women in our military and intelligence community, the death of Osama bin Laden allows us to close the chapter of the global war on terror. But it does not mean the end of the threat from Al Qaeda or their like-minded organizations. We must remain vigilant, both at home and abroad, in the fight against terrorism. The fact is, terrorism is not the only major threat to our sovereignty. There is one that lurks much closer to home, born and bred right here in this town. I'm speaking about Washington's addiction to spending. In testimony before Congress, Joint Chiefs of Staff Admiral Mike Mullen said the greatest threat to our sovereignty is not Iran, not Al-Qaeda, not radical Islam, but it's our national debt. Most people don't think of spending in terms of a threat to our sovereignty, and those who do are rarely so blunt. But Admiral Mullen is right. We simply cannot continue to operate at this pace. This year alone, the federal government will spend $3.7 trillion while only collecting $2.2 trillion. Does this sound like responsible budgeting to anyone? The average American family doesn't have this luxury. If you or I tried to run our household in this manner, the bank would eventually cut us off. It's time we apply the lesson to Washington. It's time we cut the government off. This is long overdue. Our national debt stands at a jaw-dropping $14.3 trillion. Foreign holdings account for almost half of these obligations, and much of that is owed to countries that are not always friendly to us. This is the very reason that Admiral Mullen sounded the alarm on what a big security threat our debt has become. Being indebted to countries with ideals, value systems, and agendas that are often at odds with ours puts us in a very precarious situ situation. For example, China owes $1.2 trillion of our debt. The Chinese government contends that it won't use this liability for political advantage. But this is the same government that also claims that there are no human rights violations in that country. Clearly, the Chinese government's word is not a promise that we should bank on. Along with the Chinese, a portion of the list of foreign creditors reads like a huge who's who of dictatorial regimes. Iran, Venezuela, Venezuela, Libya, make up the rogues gallery of nations that own some of our debt. These dictatorships, along with other oil exporting nations such as Saudi Arabia, whose role in spreading radical Islam is well documented, come in at number four on the list of foreign creditors. We are currently engaged in an operation with our NATO allies against Gaddafi's regime, yet rely on it in part, no matter how small the part, to keep our government operational. This is the problem with our reckless spending. We cannot put ourselves at the mercy of foreign governments. It is irresponsible and dangerous. We must act now to get our spending under control and pay down our debt. Mr. President, we cannot run a country on a visa card, nor can we keep kicking the can down the road for future generations to address. Our debt is a national security problem, and this is one that our brave men and women in uniform cannot save us from. It is up to us to make the tough decisions to get our economic house in order, and the time is now to act. Mr. President, I suggest the absence of a quorum and yield the floor. Clerk will call the roll.
Mr. Okonkwo. 